What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the extension FFD and how you can use it to create deformed lattice type shapes inside of SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first thing, this, this extension's had an interesting development recently in that it's been, in, it's been acquired by the guys over at Mindsight Studios. So they're currently in the Sketchucation forum asking what people would like to see on this plugin, so if it was improved or anything like that. So there's some interesting ideas in here. I will link to this forum thread in the notes down below if you have any suggestions on what could be cool to work with this extension. So if you remember, the way this extension works is basically it creates a control mesh around your objects that allows you to deform your geometry. So it allows you to create some kind of interesting shapes in here just by deforming that control mesh. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk just a little bit about one of the things that's really important to make this work. And I will link to this extension in the notes down below, by the way. But um, so the way that this works is basically you create a shape. So let's say we've got this one right here. I'm gonna make a couple copies of this because I'm gonna want them later. So let's say you've got a shape like this. What you would do is you would select the shape, right click, click make group. Right, so you need a group with raw geometry inside of it. Well then, you can right click, and there's an option for FFD. And what FFD is gonna do, if you have this in here correctly, is it's gonna give you options for the size of a control mesh that you can create. So in this case, for example, if I create a three by three, you can see how it's gonna create a grid of three different points in here. And then, if I double click inside of the control mesh group, like this, and start moving things around, so let's say, for example, that I took these four corners, scale this out like this you can see what it's going to do is it's going to deform the mesh based on where I move those control points right but what you might have noticed is you're getting some kind of odd results in here so for example if we look at our hidden geometry what this is doing is this is dragging this up but it's not really deforming it based on this middle control mesh all that much. So like if I scale this in, notice how I'm not getting any results in here at all. That's because my geometry isn't really set up to do this. And so I wanted to show you a quick tip to make sure that your geometry is set up to allow you to deform things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another cylinder like this. I'm gonna turn hidden geometry off. And this time when I select my object like this, so I'm gonna click on make group. And then in here, when I go to FFD, instead of going to two by two or three by three, which really only work when there's a lot of geometry in here, what you wanna do instead is you wanna right click in here and you wanna do an N by N FFD. And so the reason you wanna do the N by N is because it's got the option in here to subdivide the shape. And so what that means is that means that when you create your mesh, like this, your control cage, it's gonna actually subdivide your geometry so that there's more geometric detail in here for this object to work with. So I'm gonna click on okay, like this. That's gonna give me my control cage, but notice how this time it came in here and it sliced my model along the grid that was created with this extension. So now, let's say I was to come in here like this. And first off, let's say we were to move this up. What that's gonna do is that's just gonna move the geometry up right here. But then if I was to scale it out, and one thing that you do wanna do when you're working with this extension is you do wanna make sure that you're only picking up the points on the level that you want. But let's say I was to move this up, and then I was to scale it out about center like this. Well, notice how this is giving me a much better result than I got over here. And what you can do is you can just come in here and you can just work with these one by one. So I could drag this in, I could drag this back out to do some really interesting things with my shape. And so one thing I would say is, and so really what this piece is good for is really kind of creating like abstract shapes. So you could come in here and for example, add like a twist or something like that. So there are some geometric things that you can do um, in order to make this a little bit more interesting. But one of the things that this extension is really good for is creating, if, if you have some kind of complex edges, right? So let's say for example, that I had, and I'm gonna use the extension tools on surface just to make this easier. Let's say I had some kind of an arc, and let's go ahead and divide this up just so I have some guides in here. So let's say I had an arc, 
that ran along this surface, right? So something like this, and then we'll copy this up like this, and then I'm actually going to copy it over so it's not on this face anymore. But let's say you had a shape like this and you wanted to create some sort of a lattice. So let's say that you wanted to create a lattice right here. And we could go ahead and we could make a copy, flip it using the scale tool and then move it back. Making sure that our edges are aligned like this. Well then, what we could do is we could select all of this and I guess we can get rid of our circle now. But we could select all of this and put it in a group. You could right click and use FFD to adjust this shape where you've got a little bit of craziness going on in here with the way that it moves around, right? So maybe move it over. Something like this. Then what you've done, notice how I'm continually creating copies in here. That way if I don't have, that way if I have to come back and readjust this, I can do that later. But then you could come in here and you could use something like a pipe along path or lines to tubes and start creating some more complex shapes that follow along with this path. So, so you can use this to create these really interesting shapes by creating those paths first. So I will link to some other FFD videos on this page as well. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters for voting on this extension for me to cover this week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.